Hey team, my name is Glenn Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last tutorial, we learned how functions can help you clean up your code and make it easier to read and extend. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a particular category of UGENs, reverbs and delays. So we've been making these synthetic sounds and they come directly out of your speakers or headphones. And up until now, we haven't done anything to make it sound any different than it does by default. Reverbs and delays let you make your sounds seem like they exist in some larger acoustic space. When you hear music played live, you're usually in some kind of room with the performer, and that changes the character of the sound. The sound bounces off the walls and ceiling on its way to you, and you hear th these reflections in addition to the direct signal you're hearing from the performer. When we make music in Chuck, there is no room, but we can pretend that there is using these specialized UGENs. Let's see how it works. The simplest way to achieve this kind of effect is called a delay. Guitarists might be familiar with what's called a delay pedal, which uses the same idea. All a delay does is this. Your signal hits the delay eugen, and the delay eugen waits a duration that you specify, and then lets the signal through. It literally just creates a delay of the duration you specify. Let's quickly rebuild from scratch our standard project. Assign oscillator going to the DAC, define its gain as 0.25, a duration of a beat, let's do a half second, define major and minor chords, chuck 48 into int offset, define a position, and then a couple of loops to iterate across our chord. It sounds like this. Let's up that offset to 60 so we can hear it a little better. Now let's add in an ADSR and change it to a short impulsive sound by having a very short attack and release, zero for sustain, and let's make the decay be one eighth of a beat. Now recall that to kick an ADSR, we need to send a one to its key on value. Okay, now we're gonna stick a delay into the signal chain after the ADSR, but before the DAC. When we create a delay, we always have to define two things. The delay time itself, which is a duration, and also the max value, which is the longest duration you'd ever want that delay to be. The reason you have to define the max is that when you create a delay, it tells Chuck to hold on to a little piece of memory in your system to accommodate the sound that it hasn't played yet. The max value lets Chuck know how much memory to hold on to. Let's define the max time as a beat and the delay time as a quarter of a beat. All UGENs have a gain. Let's set the delay gain and now let's play it back. Probably didn't sound like much, right? The reason is that all you heard was a delayed sound. You heard what you heard before, just an eighth of a beat later. To hear this working the way we want to hear it, like an echo, we need to do something we haven't done before, which is to connect some things up in parallel. Let's pull the delay out of the signal chain and drop down a line and say that the ADSR envelope, in addition to connecting to the DAC, also connects to the delay, which then connects separately to the DAC. It really helps to imagine the chuck operator here as a cable. One cable leads out of the envelope into the DAC and another leads into the delay. The delay has a cable that leads to the DAC too. Now we can hear both the dry signal and the signal that went through the delay. Ordinarily, when you have a standard delay pedal for a guitar or whatever, there's a feedback parameter where you can push the delayed signal back through the circuit and then you can hear it delay more than once, creating an echo effect. To do that in Chuck, you just connect the delay eugen back to itself. Now let's hear it again. So that's a very simple way to get an echo into your project. You want to make sure when playing with delays and reverbs to keep the gain low an inch upward. If you've been playing around with Chuck outside these lessons, something you've probably noticed is that Chuck will not try to stop you if you want to make your sound exceed the maximum loudness that your sound card's bit depth will allow. When you do that, you'll just hear a terrible crunching sound. If that happens, just back off the gain on the different UGENs in your project. If you want to hear something a little more sophisticated, the makers of the C++ STK made a couple of things called reverbs. These reverbs mimic the sound of an acoustic space by building a cascading series of delays and filters. The best sounding one is called NREV, and it only has one parameter to worry about, which is the mix parameter. The mix parameter lets you choose how much reverb gets mixed into the signal, and that means you can stick a reverb into the signal chain anywhere you want because you can let as much dry signal through as you like. Be real careful with the mix parameter though, because it tends to crunch above like 0.2. Also, chucking a reverb back into itself does not work and makes it crunch immediately. 
but reverbs are an easy way to add some atmosphere to your chuck sounds. In this lesson, we learned about reverbs and delays. In our next lesson, we'll talk about stereo and randomization.